Alpha alkylation is going to be the topic of this lesson, and we're going to find out we're going to use LDA here to form an enolate, and that enolate is just going to attack an alkyl halide in an SN2 reaction. Now, that's rather harsh conditions with LDA, that super duper strong base, and we have a, a much milder way to accomplish the same task. It's called the Stork reaction, or the Stork enamine synthesis, or something along these lines. And uh, instead of using an enolate, we actually convert our ketone aldehyde to an enamine, and that acts as the nucleophile instead. And those form under much milder conditions, as we learned a couple chapters back. Now this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so let's take a look at this alpha alkylation here. And uh, in this case, step one is LDA. And LDA is going to help you form that enolate where we've deprotonated the alpha carbon, getting us our enolate. And once again, that's just a minor resonance contributor. We want to draw the major one here. He's going to look like that. And if we're going to try and draw a proper mechanism, we should really use that here. Uh, but again, he's a strong nucleophile, and we're just going to do SN2. We're going to do backside attack on an alkyl halide. So either a methyl or primary halide is preferred here. Uh, and so in this case, we're just going to use methyl bromide. And so we're going to push these electrons down, and then these are going to come and make a bond to the methyl carbon, breaking the bond to the leaving group. And ultimately, attaching a methyl group to our alpha carbon. So simple as that. It's just these two steps. So deprotonation by LDA forms your enolate, and then nucleophilic attack forms your alpha alkylation product. So let's take a look at a similar reaction here. And so let's say we take actually the product of the last reaction here. Already got a methyl group attached on one of the alpha carbons. And in that case, I really could have attached it on either side. I just chose randomly one because it's symmetrical. It would have been the same thing either way, technically. But now if we repeat this process again, and once again, we'll use LDA. So followed by methyl bromide. So now technically, if we're trying to be as correct as possible, we'd put the temperature down here, negative 78 degrees Celsius to show us that, hey, we're gonna try and form the kinetic enolate. And so now I've got two different alpha carbons and one's secondary, one's tertiary. So, and when you're using LDA at low temperatures, you're actually gonna preferentially deprotonate the less substituted one and get the kinetic enolate here. Cool, and then that's what's gonna ultimately come and attack methyl bromide here. So again, we'll push these electrons down to form a pi bond, use these pi electrons to come make the new bond to carbon, and then break the bond to bromine. And that'll get us our final product over here, which will now have a methyl substitution having taken place on both sides. Cool, so first time it didn't matter, but second time it's gonna prefer the less substitute side when we use LDA at low temperatures. So now I want to take a brief look at the Stork reaction, sometimes called the Stork enamine synthesis. And it's not that we're synthesizing an enamine as the final product, but we are going to synthesize an enamine to use as an alternative nucleophile to the enolate. Uh, so in this case, when we did this with LDA, we first converted our ketone into an enolate, and then the enolate was the nucleophile attacking methyl bromide. Well, in this example with the Stork reaction, we're going to convert our ketone into an enamine instead of the enolate. And the enamine's not quite as strong of a nucleophile as an enolate, but it's still a pretty strong nucleophile in its own right. And so you might recall from the chapter on ketones and aldehydes earlier in the course, that when you react uh, a ketone or aldehyde with a secondary amine, an acid catalyst, that you get an enamine. That's what we're gonna do here. And there's our lovely enamine. So, and once again, this thing's not quite as reactive as an enolate. Up here, we would have once again formed that enolate. Now, if I draw just the major resonance contributor, we can kind of make some comparisons here. So, and in this case, what we need to do is, you know, push these electrons down. Where's my red marker in my pocket? So push these electrons down so that these can come out and attack. Well, in this case, these electrons are being pushed down by nitrogen instead, who's gonna come and attack that methyl group. 
And the idea is that a negative oxygen here is a better electron donating group than just a neutral nitrogen. And so that's kind of what's going on. So not as good of a nucleophile, but still plenty strong here. So, and didn't require harsh conditions to form it. Just mild, you know, acid here to form an enamine, like pH 4 or 5, somewhere in that ballpark. Here we had to use LDA, a super duper duper strong base, uh, which some molecules might not survive. Cool. All right. So now we're going to use that enamine to attack our lovely methyl bromide. And that takes us here. Now, you might also recall from the chapter on ketones and aldehydes that when we formed imines from primary amines or enamines from secondary amines like we're doing here, that it was a reversible process. And we learned that you could simply take H3O plus and turn your enamine right back into a ketone. Well, it turns out not even just the enamine itself, but even once we've actually used the enamine as a nucleophile here, if we use H3O plus at this stage, it will just hydrolyze it and convert it all the way back into a ketone just the same. And so the net result we'll see is exactly the same as the reaction we did above with LDA. Now this was a simple two-step mechanism, whereas this one's much more complicated. If you actually want to draw the entire mechanism, well, you got six steps to form an enamine, then you got nucleophilic attack, that's seven steps, and then you got several steps to hydrolyze it back. So not as likely of a mechanism question. So, but nice, convenient, nifty little thing. We just temporarily convert our ketone into an enamine, use it for the nucleophilic attack, and then rehydrolyze it back to a ketone to accomplish the same overall purpose. If you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with the lesson, if you're looking for practice problems, or if you're looking for my brand new final exam rapid reviews, uh, just producing them for OCHEM 2 here, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.